Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Johnny B. But together we are Modeling for Advantage. Whoop. Dude! Mate, Warlord's newest plastic release. What happened to it? What it happened shrunk. to it? It shrunk. It shrunk. This is the SDKFZ250 Alta half track. So uh, while you get you get yours open, I'll get mine open. Uh, we'll have a look at the sprues, tell you a little bit. I've, I've had a go building some of these. You might so I got some. I've got some pro tips for you. Um, so what, tell me what you know about the 250 album. Nothing. It's tiny. It's small. It's tiny. Um, and was used a lot in recons, platoons? Yeah, in, right. Almost entirely, yes. Yeah. So you'll find these. And this is why I like this for bolt action. Because bolt action is a platoon sized game. Where are you going to find a platoon of guys just operating on their own, doing their own thing? A recon platoon, man. Oosh. Um, so in the Panzer, um, the Panzer divisions, and I think the Panzer Grenadier division is all, I'm not 100% on that one. Um, Germany has a lot of problems. It has an establishment strength. This is how we're going to make our formations. Okay. But because the army expands so massively, they can't always keep up with that. So the Panzer Grenadier divisions in 1942 have got a battalion of tanks in them. In 1944, they haven't. They've really? got Stugs instead. Stugger Stugs. Stugger Stugs. Maybe even by 43 they're taking them out. So whether the Panzer Grenadier formations are intended to have these, but they might not have had them. Although anybody who's in one of these is a Panzer Grenadier. Okay. It's just that whether they're Panzer Grenadier divisions or Panzer Grenadiers in a Panzer division. Whoa. Who cares, right? <laughs> John's lost. Yeah, gone, um, mate. Gone. So anyway, this is um, the 250 Alta. Um, version. So, the, what's different about this two versions of the two five zero, which is a which is a small German half track, can only take five or six guys in, intended for recon purposes, being a little bit cheaper. But this one's got um, it's got a, a strange sides to it. Right. The, 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 the sides are beveled. Oh, well, they come in. They come right in. Yeah. Champagne. Yeah. They've got they've got some they've got some shape to them. The Neuer, which I think is a bit later, is a simpler design. It's just straight-sided. Okay, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, saves a bit of time on construction, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. So, so this one this one is nice. They've gone for the one that's more complicated to model. And yeah, but it, it is a nice distinctive shape. And this kit is going to make you three different versions, right? Uh, yes. Three whole different types. And they are, John. Oh, why are you making me do this? So it's an SD KFC 250 old mm. half-track. And the options are to make it into a 250 one 250 slash one or a 259 or a 250 11. so what's the, the difference the 251 is the basic yeah that's just the, no the 251 is the full size one the 250 slash one is the oh, basic version of this okay which has just got a machine gun at the front um the 250 slash nine is an armored car version which has got it is described in game, and in most games it's fully enclosed rather than open topped. But really, it's just a, a grill over a cupola. Okay. Um, whether I would say that that was armoured. Not necessarily, no. But, but it is proof against maybe bullets and grenades, that kind of thing. So, Not if it rests on top of the grill. Not if it rests on top of the grill, absolutely. And the 250 slash 11 is I think the command version. So in the way that you have a, a, a 37 mil pack gun on the 251, mm. this one, because it's smaller, it can't, it doesn't fit one of those. It has the two, um, the 2.8 centimeter Panzer Busch. Oh, Panzer Busch. Panzer Busch, which was originally designed for the Falschmier gate. It's a light, it's a very light anti-tank weapon, but at 2.8 centimeters, that's really light. So it's got two innovative features of it. One is that it's squeeze ball. Oh. So you know like the little John adapter squeeze ball in the Daily Dingo. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a squeeze ball, which is a which does something to the round yeah. and improves the, the the energy. But the other is that they've, they've got tungsten penetrators. Now, this is why you don't see a lot of these in the late war. Is that a limited it's, resource? Surely? That's a very very finite resource. Yeah, yeah. But without the tungsten penetrator, this weapon was largely ineffective. It, well, ne it needed that heavier round. Um, so that's that. Gosh, we haven't even looked at the sprues yet. It's me waffling away. So we make three different versions, and I like that. It's telling you on the box 
It'll make it these is. three versions. Yes. It's not buying a box and then buying upgrades through. You're getting a lot of the core versions out of this. I mean, for example, I don't feel they, they could have sold the armored car version separately. They could it's have sold quite, each of these. They could, yeah, and, and they may do, yeah. Um, so what it is then, when we get inside, go on in, John. You show me what you... I was just going to say, you get a little bit of blurb on the front there, not that you can really see it, but oh, I, yeah. can, I can confirm that approximately 6,628 of these were made. That's, that's a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So you also get the usual Warlord stuff inside here as well. You get your asbestos fibers oh. or fire fluff on a more positive fire note. Fire fluff. Uh, you get your unit cards and you get your packed by Morella card. But you also get a new decal sheet. New one. This is a new one, yeah. Um, even with the with the grief, which I think is I think that's Rommel. Really? Yeah, I think that's what he had on the side of his command vehicles. He'll probably tell you that in there. Well, it looks like a duck on wheels. One of them. That's fantastic. I don't know if anyone can see it. Oh, there. right. Like okay. Duck. Yeah. The duck on wheels. Yeah, what's that all about? We haven't even talked about the vehicle yet. Um, the sprues. The duck on wheels. That is... So today, you're probably familiar with NATO symbols. You know, the box with a cross in it means infantry. Okay. Yeah, and and the box with the dot in the middle means artillery. Right. Those are NATO symbols. They're quite they're quite modern. Those are the German Second World War unit symbols. Well, that's crazy. So if you get if you read um, Achtung Panzer by Guderian, yeah, um, there are tables of organization in there with these little with these kind of little ducky symbols. half track things. And yeah, yeah, and they're, and they're much more. Um, they're much less regular. They're not all squares. They're all little pictograms of one type or another. Did you know? But that's that's the one for armored car, I think. Awesome. Or a, it, there's or two, a variation there's two of variants it. there. One that looks like there's a dude jumping out the back, and the other one's just like a little knob. You're saying it's a, a motorized infantry or something. The unit cars, and it gives, does it give you one for each? Yeah. It does. It gives you one, nine, and for one. each. You like the unit cards? I think they're handy as a reference, but you yeah. sometimes never have enough, right? It, yeah, it's it's the it's the fact that they don't sell decks of them, so I can buy the ones for the vehicles I don't have. So I've, I, I, yeah, I, I collect them, and one day I'll play games only using ones that I've got cards for. Nice. So this is a new kit. I think it's twenty one pounds at retail. A shilling, of course. You can buy these from the Modeling for Advantage web store, and they did send me. Um, as a as a retailer, I got one of these, uh, un, an unboxed one, kind of oh, you know, a as, as a demo one. piece. So the three sprues here, John. If you look, this I've got the advantage over you in that I've already built you've, some of these. You've had a play around, yeah. Um, and and we'll show you some of them in a minute. In fact, I can do that now, can't I? Look, there you go. Oosh, there's the one. first one, which is just built as the two five zero standard. And there's the second one, which I built as the there's the slash. Slash nine. Let me look at my. Let me version. look at my reference card. Yeah. Yes. Now I don't know what the players might like this one because this one in the armored car slot, but it's cheap. I think it was something like ninety points. Cheap. It's got chips. two centimeter auto cannon, so like you get a couple of shots cannon. there. Um, and it's got the recce ability, so it's a it's a cheap armor. A lot of us have got a plastic Puma, but a Puma is not a cheap vehicle to fill that slot with. Um, sometimes you want something cheap, don't you? And always. The, yeah. And it's got a coax machine gun. It's a German I vehicle. I mean, yeah. That's so the machine guns are always great, right? 90 hull points. So the basic hull is made from these two, these two sprues. And then from a design perspective, that's good. Yeah. Right? The, these are common uh, to all of them. And then these two, even better still, this third sprue, mm -hmm. it's actually two half sprues. One of them you entirely use only the for the armored car. Oh mate, yeah, they've even marked them up on top. So that's this oh, whole side is for the that. nine, and this one's for the eleven. Yes, I'm I'm guessing there's some crossover pieces. Maybe. No, none, none at all. No, that was that was the thing I, because I have made the wow. nine and the one. Yeah, I have not used anything from this sprue. That's cool. Yeah, there was there was no crossover at all. So, what can I tell you about this kit? Um, I mean, it looks like because it's got you know that thicker framing, it's doesn't it's not like a Renedra one that's been um, not Renedra. Uh, what are they called? Italeri. It, it, it's Italeri. Italeri. It's not one of theirs that's been re retooled. I don't think because they usually have sort of tubular 
sprues. Yes, they do, yeah. Rather than square ones, the Warlord original well. stuff. And it's got Warlord games stamped all over it. So, Produced um, by SK Tooling Limited. Oh, yeah. So there was somebody else. Um, and and it, it, so it surprised me a little bit because compared to things like the Universal Carrier, this is a difficult kit. Is it, what are we talking here, complexity well, of we are too many bits? Too many very small parts. <laughs> there is some diddy parts, so I'm looking here. The parts count is getting towards 100 with this. Now that does include the numbers on the variant sprues, so it isn't, it isn't strictly that high. Um, but you're going to be looking at 80 minimum, right? You, you look, well, in. you're definitely looking at 60. Um, and it, it's down to... The problem is, you see, for someone like me who's built a, lot of, built a lot of 15 mil vehicles, many of these details are just ignored, left yeah. off, or, or molded in and just, and just accept the fact that they're relatively low fidelity. As you move up to a bigger scale like this, things like headlamps, you just, they're not going to mold on very well. No. But they're going to be very fiddly. And you've got several aerials and sticky out parts oh in this, uh, including quite complicated internal furniture. Again, I mean, what's the line? What's that line? Where where do you stop with the uh, the detail to make it more? Of a yeah, yeah. So my tip for if you're coming to build these is actually having having done it. I'm I'm afraid to say I don't like to be negative about things because I really like the finished product. It's a beautiful kit. It's a beautiful kit, but it isn't easy to build. So I benefit a little bit from the pain that I had with my first right. one. Um, is the assembly instructions do tell you where everything goes and it does have the parts numbered which is good i think if i was doing this again there was a lot of flicking backwards and forwards i might i might have actually cut these pages out so that i could look at the part number and then just while i was looking at the yeah. diagram so i wasn't flicking backwards and forwards all the time um but one of the key thing with this i would say and you, and if you build one from the instructions you'll find is the order in which it tells you to do things makes it more work than it needs to be right and the the two areas for that is um the first one is the interior of the uh, of the main hull so that's this bit you can see these two parts of the body yeah. are going to slot together mm -hmm. so there's furniture that goes in here you've got to build up you've all got to put, of the internal you've got to put the seats and you even attach oh, the steering wheel right yeah again separately um there's a little bit of a steering column um things like tiny. things like towing hooks on the front uh, of the vehicle, but particularly the interior furniture on here. So I would I would start before gluing the body together, go through the instructions, find out where all that interior furniture goes, because what it tells you to do is to try and put a lot of this stuff in after you've built it. Yeah, after you've put that secondary, after you've put the top bit on. Yeah, yeah. So you haven't got access to. You have, a lot but of it's that. fiddly. I mean, if you're if you're a pro modeler, then it's going to be fine. But for somebody like me who's a bit of a bit of a sausage finger, um, I, f I found these very difficult to get them into place afterwards. I mean, that's fair then. That's not a negative comment. That's not negative. You're saying if you fancy playing with tweezers, <laughs> yeah. then you can. Yes. <laughs> but if you don't, then yeah. have a little look see before. Yeah. But, but I'm so used to what kits made ex exclusively for war gamers, <laughs> and they're just so much simpler yeah. than this. You don't have this. And the other one is. So again, as you as you build this part, it then fits into this piece like a cradle. It's a big oh, flat piece. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yep. I've got some. I've got some clippers actually, so I can. So You're going to demonstrate. I'm going to just show you this. If you go back to your um, upper hole. So it's going to fit, fit together like that. Yeah, and when that gives you that really distinctive outer shape. And then that's going to fit into this piece. Oh, you pop it in. Okay. You pop it in. But that, that's nice. That works very well. The thing is, again, with the order of the instructions, is, it, is there are several bits of tools and lamps and things like that which go onto this. And if you follow it in order, it tells you to put it in later. So and when you've then got this hull in the way, some of these holes are quite difficult to access. Right, for the angles and whatnot. And, and when you've started putting the, the lamps in, and so it's very crowded. Okay. Whereas 
I did it. If you work on it, I like glued that. it all onto here and then slotted this on, and it did, and it did fit. I was worried there was no problem. It was going to get in the way. That one of those small pieces was going to get in the way, and it didn't. So that's you know. Okay. Well, that's good. To that's know. I would I would a hundred percent do that. And then lastly, it's probably in terms of lessons learned from the build was um, you probably building the two five zero slash one. The standard. The standard one. And there's some furniture on the floor around the gearbox and so forth. Mm. And it comes with some nice crew figures, but unfortunately, he's not going to be able to fit. Yeah, you showed me that. The way his feet are positioned. There's there's nowhere at this end of the at the front end of the vehicle that doesn't have either a chair or a bench or a very funny angle. So I can have him. If you see there, look, John, he's at the, he's at the right height to use the gun shield, but, but he can't get his feet down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, in the picture, they show him doing exactly that through the gun shield. Yeah. But physically, you can't. Now, if I hadn't put what I assume is the gearbox on the floor, which is a separate piece. Right. Then his feet wouldn't. There would be space for his feet. Happy days. But that's like one of Bear the first things you do is put the chairs and the benches on the on, into the lower hole because it starts again. I probably can demonstrate there. Look, he's got he's got no problem standing there until as long I, as it's open. And, he's, and you know that's it's a, it's a good kit. He's the right height to to slot that on the gun shield. Okay. There is um, a pintle mount on the back. Now, this is one of the things of bolt action. <laughs> yeah. Um, is these are open topped about 1942. The instructions for Panzer Grenadiers were to fight from the vehicle. Oh, mate, yeah, we had this in the game, didn't Don't we? Don't get out of the vehicle because you're slowing down. If you get out of the vehicle, you're doing a job that infantry on foot should be doing, was the, was the philosophy. I'm not saying that that's perfect, but the idea, the idea being is this is not what you're there to do. As soon as you have to get out, you're getting it all wrong. Um, but these don't come with a second machine gun. That second machine gun, that pintle mounted one, that's the squad's machine gun. Right. They come with a machine gun. Yes, they do. That's where you put it. Just slap so it on there. So you still use it. Yeah. Yeah? So one, one of these is not going to have two machine guns. But more importantly, from a bolt action perspective, I'd like to see them have the option to do that. So whilst the unit is embarked, you have two LMGs. If, they've, if, they've, got an, if they've got one, yeah. And if they disembark, then the squad takes it with them. Yes. Yeah. I think it still be counted as an MMG because it's one. got a mount and yeah. it's got it's got stowage for bullets and so forth. Oh, it's still a crew inside. Overall, I, I, I'm as I say, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not whining about it. It is it was a more difficult kit than I was expecting, but that's probably because I built a lot of Flames of War type yeah, war gaming kits been recently. Spoiled. <laughs> I've been spoiled with it like this could be easy. Um but what am I gonna use it for? Well, we um, can we talk about it yet? We may or may not be doing the uh, combined arms campaign. In the combined arms campaign, we've decided that our pieces are worth five hundred points. Yes, yeah. because we've realised, having play tested it, we could end up with four armies aside in, in a battle. Yeah. That's big. and and that's huge for us. Um, so I was looking for some, you know, what am I going to do with my armoured for me? My armoured units. I want if I've got one armoured unit against one infantry unit. I want it not to be a tank and ten guys. Yeah. Um, so this is going to fulfil that spot. So I can use these these light reconnaissance vehicles. Um, That's awesome. And, and have a That's decent number really of cool. them yeah. for 500 points. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, and I think in a thousand point game, you can get a lot of these. And to be honest, these, I think, were 70 or 75 points. And it's a machine gun with seven front armour. Yeah. That's, That's not one. a bad unit with, uh, without guys in it. For the one regular, 75 points. Oosh. 75 points. And in Fortress Budapest, there is an army list, which are, which is entirely... It's a, a Alclaron, which is the recon detachment. So you can have these as, as the cornerstone of the force. Perfect. Which is what I'm going to be doing with it. So yeah, um, overall, it's nice. a nice kit. Don't go into it thinking you're going to knock it out in 10 minutes. Hopefully those two tips were useful. One was put as much of the furniture inside this... Before before sealing it, yeah, yeah. There's things, there's rack, the stuff that goes on the side in the racking cabinets that go in and so forth. All of which it tells you to do after, after you've glued this together. Right. 
Um, and all of the pieces that fit onto here, including the, um, the, the towing cables that go, that can go on the front on the of here. Side. There's just so much of this you can do before you do that. And then you've got a lot less space okay. to go. All right. Uh, and if you want to use a gunner, you through the gun shield. Don't put the gearbox in. Don't put the gearbox <laughs> in or test it before you do. Mm. Um, and and to be fair, lastly on that, I haven't tested because I haven't used it. There are guys in other crew figures on the Panzerbusch, yeah, which have which have got a raised foot. Yeah, man. So is that he, a thing? Is he, that the thing? Those guys probably can stand on it, but they don't have machine gun arms. The arms on those guys. No, they don't. And the way... And, and you can't even swap them over. You can't because of the way this particular machine gunner has been is made. His left arm's moulded in, man. Yeah. One arm's moulded in and, and there's just a socket to put the fist in. Um, it, it, it looks all right for a nice, for a nice clean, simple sculpt. It goes together easy. But you can't put this machine gun very easily on one of the other guys. All right. Hope you found that useful. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. -bye. So if you like bolt action and you're looking to start the system or start a new army, on our website modelingforadvantage.co.uk we have a range of the starter sets as well as a few of the starter armies. Do consider buying from us as a way of supporting the channel. Thank you for watching.